Dojo is the going to be the fifth fastest supercomputer. Way to go, Tesla, getting fifth. You know, I didn't, that's <laughs> not a very, very Elon Musk thing. You would think he would go for the number one. What's up, guys? I'm Emmett Short. Tesla's AI Day is almost here. And recently, I had a great conversation with Alex from ticker symbol U. We speculate on a few of the more plausible ideas, things you might hear at the presentation on August 19th. There's a really fun idea in this episode that should definitely make its way to Elon. So when you hear it, Give me a comment and hit me up on Twitter and join forces with me so we can get this idea some attention and get it to Elon. Definitely go check out Alex's channel. And if you have a good time, hit that like, consider subscribing and turning on that bell notification. Hey, real quick, if you like data and sleeping, 8sleep has helped me get 15% better sleep. They're the Tesla of sleep. The AI learns from your data and autopilots you into a deeper slumber. Save 100 bucks with code Emmett Short. Watch my dedicated video for more info. And let's get into it. Elon is often saying about AI day, the sole purpose of that is to attract talent to get more of the engineers, the best minds in the world to be working on their AI, right? So I think what they're gonna do is try to highlight all of their AI offerings in one event, starting with Dojo, right? The cloud computing, super AI training, down to the FSD chip, which is the hardware on each Tesla, then talk about the software that runs on that chip and how it sees the world and reconstructs scenes, and then onto all of their other AI applications, right? And that way you get a full sense of all the AI work going on at the gigafactories, inside software and servers, inside the individual cars, and that should be attracting people, you know, no matter what their AI background is, to be like, oh, I wanna work on that piece. Oh, I wanna touch that thing. Oh, I wanna be the guy that helps design this feature, right? So yeah. I think that's what we're gonna see broadly at AI Day, is just this full sweep of all the AI capabilities the whole Tesla machine has to offer, not just the cars. Do you think they'll announce any sort of hardware 4.0? Ooh, like a new FSD chip? Yeah. Um. They could, I, my understanding is that their current chip is like absolutely phenomenal and, you know, is running version 9.2 very well. Um, but that chip wasn't optimized for vision only, right? It had radar capabilities built into it because it, until recently the cars used radar, right? So yeah. maybe, yeah, maybe it could be optimizing for just camera data. There's a new chip coming out. I'm not sure if that'll be this AI day, but that I bet is in the next Zero, I mean, one or two years. They did show that stack of the chip on the on the teaser. They didn't say, you know, Ooh. what uh, they didn't say what chip that was. Why would they show us a chip if not to say, hey, there's a new chip? Hey, that's fair. So you, he's been talking about this button for a long time. You know, he's been talking about wide rollout of FSD beta into a wide release. Uh, do you think this could be a time where they they <sighs> might announce that? I don't know. Yeah, like the date of the big button push to wake yeah. up the robo taxis. Yeah. Maybe. I think they're getting close enough. You know, they have FSD 9.2 now in like, I don't know how many hundreds or even thousands of vehicles. I know you have to be a tester to still have it today, right? But like, for sure, we. I think we're definitely going to get at least a performance update on how the first crowd of people who have it, like how many in less interventions they're getting right. and things like that. That'd that be great be to get some data. Yeah. yeah, I would love yeah. to see some data on the beta because we see a lot of videos. We see, you know, we we can literally watch it work, but we're not necessarily getting all the the breakdown of how many interventions and things like that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah hopefully think... we'll see that. Uh, hopefully th they'll do some of that announcing at uh, AI Day. That'd be cool. Yeah, I think the real statistic I'm interested in actually besides the lower number of interventions, Tesla always puts out this safety report, right? Hey, here's how many accidents per yeah. million miles happen when people are driving, and then how many accidents happen during drive assist and then FSD. It'd be cool to see that same statistic for new vision only FSD 9.0, lower number of interventions, but also much safer than previous iterations. I think that's ultimately what they're looking for, right? Right, because yeah, that's been getting a lot of bad press actually recently. I think the most compelling argument against I heard was um, that everybody that's 
on the street is also in the beta, you know, like, and, they, <laughs> and they're not, they didn't give their permission to be in the beta, but, the, but yet these cars are on the road. Oh, I see. Yeah. There's no like uh, robot training certification that you have to go through to like get that, you know, that's right. Get approved for the beta test. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, that's the real use case, right? So it's these people who are accepting the liability of babysitting a robot, driving them around instead of driving themselves. And ultimately, that's what the average consumer is going to have to do as well, right? I've engaged full self driving. I'm babysitting the wheel, but I am not currently controlling it while the car is under motion. So I'm not so sure that training people would have been the right way because then it's like, okay, it works for trained people. How does it work for the average driver who just wants to buy a Tesla, hit the button and get where they're going, right? You know what would be exciting is if he said, hey, we're gonna make the uh, the data public as it goes, as it gets better, and then give us a benchmark. So when interventions go down to this yeah. level, then that is when we will have a public, a wide release. That's when we'll get the button. Like, yeah. why not give us, a, you know, if it's a steady march of nines, then why not show us the graph? Like, let us like log in every day and root for it. And um, and then when it hits it, that's what everybody agrees on. This is the number when it's safe enough to like do a wide release. Or an even like um, more milestone driven example of that is like every time we add a new nine, will extend the beta to another thousand people, right? right? Like here's right. the relationship between how accurate it is and how many people get to be in the beta. Yeah. So that'd you can literally sick. see people getting added as it ticks down and gets safer, right? I'm going to tweet that at Elon. I'm going to, that's, that's a good idea. He should do yeah. that. That would build excitement too. I think a lot of people would, uh, For you sure. know, talk about it every day. Oh, we're at this number. We're at this number. Yeah. For sure. That'd be yeah. Fun. I mean, it'd be a scoreboard, right? Like and right. scoreboard sell. So for sure. I definitely agree. Yeah. With that. Yeah, that seems like also a very Elon thing to do. <laughs> for sure. And you know, like my moonshot for what Elon's going to do is instead of Dojo, it's going to be something Dogecoin related, right? <laughs> and he's going to find a way to use Dojo to mine Dogecoin or something silly. But like, I bet Dogecoin makes an appearance somehow in relation to Dojo. It just seems like a such a natural play on words that he won't pass it up, you know? Right. Do you think there's any, any other AI applications uh, across Tesla's products like, um, you know, battery packs or solar or whatever that we might hear about in, in AI day? Ooh, that's a good question. So one of the things I think about a lot is auto bidder. So I think auto bidder, which uh, I don't know, have you talked yeah. about auto bidder a lot on your channel? Okay, so a your little bit. Knows what that is. Yeah. Okay. Well, just quickly for people that don't know what auto auto bidder is, uh, it's basically the system that runs your power wall. Now I don't I don't know if it's for home stuff or it's mostly just for enterprise, but it's basically regulates how much power usage is going to your applications or back to the grid. Correct. Yeah, that's, that's nearly perfect. So the thing I'll add to that is it's like a global energy management solution. So it looks at everyone's houses or everyone who's plugged in, right? And says like, oh, over here, it makes sense for you to store energy to use it. And over there, it makes sense for you to send it back to the grid for other people to use it based on whatever economics and math it's doing behind the scenes, right? Oh, so they talk to each other. Yeah, They're so it's a bidders. smart grid, yep. Ah. So it's either a... It, it can be deployed as a standalone solution on a campus or among several homes like a microgrid or a large scale grid or individually, like you said, your battery deciding, hey, I'm gonna send my energy back to the grid versus store it for later use. Okay, and then Dojo is the gonna be the fifth fastest supercomputer. Way to go, Tesla, getting fifth. You know, I didn't, that's <laughs> not a very, very Elon Musk thing. You would think he would go for the number one, but... Uh, um, and then he said that they're perhaps going to uh, let other companies have access to that. Yeah, I think, you know, I think about Amazon Web Services, right? So Amazon has a unbelievable amount of different things you can do as services from their servers, right? And certainly AI training is one of them. But, you know, I think Tesla, when it's not training its giant fleet of vehicles, can rent out some of their, you know, compute power for other near peer applications. Like you were saying before, Boston Dynamics wants to train up a new robot to see stuff in a crazy different new environment. It can get a lot of Tesla's data, at least the applicable data, and use that as a data training set or even use their computer power to do that or whatever. I think, you know, that's an example of software and hardware as a service 
that again is a new Tesla business unit that's separate from just automobiles and energy. It's exciting. I'm hoping that uh, we see a you know uptick in the stock on AI day. I think uh, <laughs> it's a good reason for people to get excited. You know, uh, my guess is the better Elon does, the lower the stock will go. <laughs> if I know anything about the stock market, it's the better the performance is on AI day, the worse the stock price will be the day after. Why is that? Why do you think that is? I don't know, because the market doesn't know what it's doing. You know, uh, so <laughs> the real answer, I think, is because as we saw in battery day, these are years into the future out promises, right? Everything from mining their own lithium to, you know, um, or sorry, mining their own nickel to uh, the structural battery to the new battery chemistries to whatever that's not getting rolled out tomorrow. So when people like financial analysts, they're like, oh, the next quarter, this isn't happening. So the stock must be bad. I think that's a flaw in how the market is looking at Tesla when Elon's looking decades away and people are thinking weeks away, right? And I think the same thing will happen in AI day when he's like, hey, in 2025, or when he says 2023 and means 2025, these yeah. cars will drive themselves. Analysts <laughs> are like, well, next quarter's not 2022 or 2023 so yeah i'm selling my stock right like right yeah good i'll buy more yeah yeah i mean that, that's exactly who i'm buying from for sure i think we've covered it i think we've decided that they're definitely coming out with ar glasses uh in a 100%. few days yeah and i'm buying them i'm next in line <laughs> yeah yeah i'll definitely pre-order that i have my tesla tequila decanter no that's... tequila i just bought the decanter so <laughs> i'm i'm the guy for these lensless <laughs> ar glasses you know that's actually something I forgot to put in the main part of my video. I'm like, they made surfboards. They made tequila. You know, yeah. like, hey. They made short shorts. Right, right? They made short shorts. Why wouldn't they make some AR glasses? Come on. They're That's totally the going to make argument. AR glasses. Yeah. That's the obvious <laughs> argument. If you would have led with that, I would have agreed with you. Right? Oh, I screwed it up. So, Alex, thanks for coming on. This was really great. I uh, loved your insights. And uh, we got to do it again. Sure, yeah, huge fan of your show. Thanks so much for having me. It was a real pleasure.